So I, I want to make a video talking about this whole uh, setup here and like I, I have a video on my channel of this arcing, some some pretty good sparks. I'm not going to show the power supply since I've showed that in the previous video, you can check it out, I'll have it in the description, it's also in the description of the other video. Right now I'm only going to show you uh, this part, which is the main coil, primary, secondary, top load, the capacitors, the spark gap, and everything that entails with that. Now when it comes to the power supply, I have I haven't changed it. Uh, the only thing I have, I've added an Arduino so I can control it a bit, a bit easier, a bit more easily. I have some fans in there to cool it, I have it in a nice enclosure and everything. So it's it's the same. It's just that it's a bit nicer. So uh, here, let's let's begin with this whole thing. Now we'll split this into a few parts. First, we have the spark gap down here. Then we have the capacitors, some down here as well. Then we have the primary coil, which is this coil here, and then this big thing here is the secondary, and this is the top load with the, the breakout point I have over there. So, first the spark gap. This is a static spark gap. I have two nails right here that I've just uh, connected using these fuse clips right here. These are meant to hold in a fuse, and this is adjustable by rotating the, the screws in and out. Now these little binding posts here, I just connect my, uh, it's a 30 kilovolt ZV, the dual flyback ZVS power supply running from 24 volts at 20 amps. So I just connect one side there and the other side there, doesn't matter positive or negative. And then this side goes and connects to this side of the power of the capacitor bank. This capacitor bank is, is a tin foil capacitors with uh, two plates in between and I have insulated all the connections with hot glue because whenever you move this around this wire if you tug it can like get out of the capacitor and that will either make you have to open the pull back in or a bit more dangerous it'll get in a position where it will start arcing between the plate and ruin the capacitor and you'll just have a bad day and that's just happened way too many times also if you're planning to use these capacitors know that they don't last that long like eventually they will start dying out in unison and you will have to make new ones. This uh, uh, plastic I have right now, it's not plastic, it's uh, cellulose acetate. It's quite hard, so I'm expecting these to last uh, quite a bit of time. So we'll see. So this is this uh, this plate here is just uh, tainted plexiglass that I've drilled holes into to connect all the capacitors how they should be. There's two more down here, and this is 20 nanofarads rated at 60 kilovolts. It's what I found works best with this coil, which might be a bit too much at 30,000 volts, but I had it lower at 15, and it was nowhere near as good as it is now. So this side of the spark gap goes to the capacitor bang, and from this, the capacitor bang goes through this wire to one side of the primary coil. This primary coil is AUG8. Uh, it's stranded, and it has seven turns, a bit more than seven turns. I think it's tapped at 7.5 right here. Now eventually, uh, uh, no eventually, originally I had a spiral. I had a spiral coil which worked as well but I think it had some problems when it came to tuning. So I swapped to this spiral which is very poorly made I must add. Like, like you, you could probably make this way better but it didn't make a big difference so I didn't really care. So then this uh, this uh, tap point that I have here, this is tuned. This tap point goes through the back of here to the other side of this, the spark gap. Over there, the other side of the spark gap. And then that goes to the other side of the power supply. Now this, the secondary coil is uh, a thousand turns of 0 0.4, I think it's 0 0.4 millimeter wire. Uh, and then one side of that is, if we can see down here, you can't really see it. It's that red wire in the back that goes through uh, this channel. And it ends up with this alligator clip, which gets clipped to uh, RF ground, which is just a big copper pipe stuck in the ground or uh, counterpoise, whatever you have that you can use. Just never connect this to mains ground. That's a good way to kill a lot of devices. And then the other side is connected to the storage top load that is connected with aluminum tape, which you shouldn't do. Find a better way. This just like falls off, it's flopping, it's kinda bad. Also up here, this is where the wire comes up and gets uh, hooked up with aluminum tape. Also if you can solder it, do it, it's much better, but this worked for me. And then here we have the breakout point that's just uh, sticking out.
You can have this breakout point here, you can have it on the side, you can have no breakout point if you want. It doesn't really matter. It's just to concentrate all the energy to come out from one point. So that's essentially it. Any tips uh, that I have? Uh, while tuning this, you could use the oscilloscope frequency generator frequency counter method. It's the best. But I just <laughs> I just had lights off and just like see when the spark is bigger, essentially. It's not a very scientific method, but it worked fine. I did spend probably a, a good couple of two months uh, tuning this. It did take quite a bit of time. But it ended up going quite well uh, in the end. This here, I also haven't mentioned, this is the strike rail. In case you know it ever comes back, I don't want it to hit. It's, I don't know. I don't want it to hit itself or the, the primary here. And this uh, strike layer is obviously connected to our ground because that's where you should connect it. Last thing I want to add with these uh, capacitors right here, if you can get some proper capacitors, get them. They're a big pain to build. The material is not the easiest to find. A lot of tin foil, a lot of construction. The wiring gets kind of messy. And any mistakes, like you can't blow these up, thankfully, they're not very dangerous. They can catch fire, which I find it happened quite a few times, unfortunate, I know. And generally, ZVS coils, while this one is uh, it's decently big, it's medium sized, let's say, they're, since they have such high voltage, it's kind of hard to get capacitors for them and get the spark up to fire properly. So, if you can get something like an NST or MOTS, I'd recommend it over a ZVS flyback. But if you want to make this, just because you want to have uh, flybacks and want to make a Tesla coil with them, this solution here works fine. Just the tip I'd say, a lot of videos that I've seen use quite low capacitance. I'm using like 20 nanofarads, which is quite high for a, a ZVS driven flyback system, honestly. Like most people may use 8 or like 12, like using 20 is quite a stretch. And you could probably use more and make this even stronger. But that's what I went with, and it's worked fine for me. Now, uh, in the rest of this video, I'm going to add this coil, uh, this coil while it works, like all of its arcs and it uh, doing its thing. I have a video of all the clips on my channel. If you have seen that already, uh, you can end this video here. And if you haven't, go and check them out. But as this, this has been my coil. This is probably my first legit coil. I have I have some like very big slayers that are pretty good but nowhere near as this and this took me like six months to make or something so it was quite a big project but yeah um, that's it i will by the way be probably posting a video of the updated power supply with the arduino controller maybe showing off the code but nah, i don't know if i'll do that if anyone wants to see that just put it in the comments anyway Yeah.